Hello everyone, my name is Paul Lee and I'm a medical device training manager working in Morrison Hospital in Swansea in Wales in the United Kingdom and my presentation is focused on the role of the medical device safety officer and how we help contribute towards incident reporting and learning. Now when a patient is harmed or could have been harmed due to an incident involving a medical device it is vital that it gets reported to help improve patient safety. To improve medical device incident reporting and learning, NHS England and the MHRA issued a joint patient safety alert in March 2014 asking providers to identify a named medical device safety officer or an MDSO. So this role was established in the United Kingdom in March 2014. A stage three directive was issued from NHS England and the MHRA asking people to improve medical device incident reporting and learning. NHS Improvement have subsequently gone on to develop an interactive and learning website where all incidents can get reported and lessons can also be learnt. The Medical Device Safety Officer Network consists of two key parts. Medical devices are covered by the Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, and patient safety issues in the United Kingdom are looked at by NHS Improvement based in London. Now, patient care is delivered by NHS providers such as NHS hospitals, NHS trusts etc and we gather in reported incidents via the National Learning Reporting System, the NRLS, and we currently record approximately 2 million incidents per annum. Within their organisations, the role of the Medical Device Safety Officer is to promote safe use of medical devices, to encourage incident reporting at all levels across the organisation, to provide expert advice for those asking for help and to serve as the essential link for identification of risks and concerns surrounding medical devices. They also have an important role in supporting the implementation of local and national safety initiatives such as patient safety alerts and notices. Key to the success of building a community for medical device safety officers is a national community and we currently have representation from all countries across the United Kingdom that link into this network. Participation is also important and people get involved in different levels from contributing towards alerts to carrying out surveys. MDSOs also offer valuable insight. They usually have a range of experiences from clinical engineering to medical device management and know how these devices should be used or shouldn't be used and that can help contribute towards outcomes from patient safety investigations. The most important factor with the MDSO is the monthly WebEx meetings. Medical device safety officers get together every month to review current issues and they could literally be just a few days old where we can share learning, ask for help and assistance and help MDSOs to take back important messages to their organisations. The Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Agency, uh, National NHS improvement patient safety also contribute towards these WebExes. The role of an MDSO is varied and currently within the UK there are 350 signed up medical device safety officers and they've discussed, debated and shared information around 40 key subjects since March 2014. If you wish to become an MDSO, then there's a registration process which I'll cover towards the end of this presentation. And the vast majority of MDSOs are either medical device engineers, clinical engineers, uh, there's some nursing staff, clinical governance staff uh, and medical device managers. The range of subjects covered on the monthly WebEx uh, is quite vast. You can see from the list in front of you. We've had presentations on the update on GS1 barcoding presentations on medical device user manuals and pitfalls. The CAS or central alerting system has been covered on how you register and how you report incidents across the United Kingdom. Point of care testing and self-test blood glucose monitors and the National Health Service master indemnity process, a legal liability process covered by manufacturers putting equipment out on loan. We've also discussed and debated medical device time clock settings and whether they should be kept in Greenwich Mean Time or British Summer Time to avoid confusion for users. We've looked at non-automatic weighing instruments and patient weighing devices and the way that they are weighed differently in organisations. We covered recently the company's reps credentialing review which looks at how we manage visitors, especially reps from medical device industries when they come into hospitals and how we control 
their access to patients and patient care areas. A general topic that we cover from time to time is the new international standard on small ball connectors, ISO 80369, and we've shared information around enteral feeding connectors, and more recently, the alert that was issued from NHS Improvement on neuraxial connectors for intrathecal and epidural infusions. We've covered good practice for patient safety investigations and how to carry these out, and analysis for medical device-related incidents. We've looked at supply disruption alerts, and we've had presentations on the importance of medical device training. Recently, new guidelines in the UK came out, or in Europe actually, for medical device regulations. They were also covered, and also the value of multiple reporting sources for in vitro diagnostic devices. The Medical Device Safety Officer acts as an important link between users and the MHRA and NHS improvement. They liaise with other medical device safety officers and get involved in developing audits of use and safety and also in surveys to gauge opinion before progress is made on patient safety alerts. MDSOs also get involved in developing and writing reports and sharing that information both locally and nationally amongst the MDSO network. So if you wish to become a medical device safety officer, then you need to become nominated by your organisation. And usually there's only one MDSO login per employer. You can access the forms through the safety alerts at dh.gsi.gov.uk website. And then you'll be able to log in for the forum where you can discuss issues of concern and get access to WebExes which are recorded monthly. You will then be added to the national MDSO list and you will receive an email each month on how to log into the webinar or the WebEx. You'll also be invited to come to the annual MDSO Patient Safety Conference, which happens in April each year. An additional resource that the MDSO network can link into is the new National Association of Medical Device Educators and Trainers, or NAMDET. This organization publishes a regular journal where NHS improvement and the MHRA share important messages, share updates on patient safety alerts, and the medical device safety officer also contributes towards articles within this journal. So thank you very much for listening to me, and I hope in just a few minutes I've managed to outline the role of the medical device safety officers in the United Kingdom and the important role that they have in incident reporting and learning. And where a patient is harmed or could have been harmed due to an incident involved in a medical device, it is vital that it is reported to help improve patient safety. And the role of the medical device safety officer is key to this improvement. Thank you very much.